All right. So, here we are yes. in Harbor Springs, as far as I can tell. Yes. And uh, I'm going to talk to Mary Stuart Adams. Yes. All right. And uh, we have just finished um, uh, a few days at the Dark Sky Park. Yes, the Headlands and International Dark Sky Park. Dark Park. Okay. Yes. So now we're going to find out a little bit more about what made that happen in the first place. In other words, how did that start? The International Dark Sky Park. It started um, out of an initiative that I had that I shared with two other people in the community. Uh, one who had established an organization called the Outdoor Lighting Forum uh -huh. and another who worked for the county. So here in Harbor Springs, we are in Emmett County in northwest lower Michigan. Okay. And so the three of us were meeting together regularly back in 2005. And this was around the time when I was really starting to get established in the community as somebody who could teach about the night sky. Uh, so I need to back up just a little bit and describe mm -hmm. um, how oh, I got here and how we each met one another. Exactly. Because I'm, I'm from Michigan. I grew up in Michigan. I've spent almost all of my life here, just two years that I didn't live in Michigan. And this was a summertime uh, vacation place that my family came when I was a child. So when it was time for me to slow down the pace of my own life while raising children, I came to this area. Mm -hmm. So that was in 2002. And I needed to get settled first, but I had this, I had been studying the night sky and studying something called astrosophy uh -huh. through, um, through spiritual science and trying to understand how it could inform us about ourselves. What, what is our relationship to the night sky? Because I could see that every culture throughout history had a star knowledge and stories and religious and spiritual practice, civic practice, agricultural methods, things that were deeply rooted in their understanding of the sky. Mm -hmm. And I was just burning with this desire to share that. Not that I had all of this knowledge, but just that if we could see the night sky, then we could have this experience and it's rich with stories. And I felt that it was a very strong foundation for education in mm -hmm. the community. Mm -hmm. So I would just go wherever I could get an audience, wherever I could get someone's attention and speak about this. So it was in this t kind of circumstance that I first met Fred Gray. And Fred Gray at the time was a reporter for the newspaper. And through a funny circumstance, we found ourselves at a, same, a, a similar event. And he started asking me questions about what I did. So I boldly told him that I teach about the night sky. Mm -hmm. And he kind of laughed and said that he didn't know what that meant. A so lot of people don't, they unfortunately. Don't. And but what, they will now. <laughs> they will now. Because what it, what it means for me at that time meant uh, speaking the star names. Yeah. Describing where those names come from and what they meant to the people who use those names and how we use them now. Mm -hmm. Just to pay attention to what's happening there. Where, where does the name Arcturus come from? Mm -hmm. And what has it me meant in the different cultures that have used that name? Mm -hmm. And so I didn't realize that he was really taking note and paying attention to everything I said until 24 hours later he called me and read to me a newspaper article that he had just completed writing about me. Hmm. And I realized that he really took note and paid attention to every detail, and he made it his business to spread the word about what I was doing. Mm -hmm. And so a nice friendship developed, and he was really instrumental in helping me to identify places where I could do this. For instance, the community college, um, different camps in the area because this is a beautiful resort area a lot of inland lakes a lot of the great lake is right here right and so there's a lot of opportunity to get large groups of people that are vacationing here and fred was well connected to that and he introduced me to a lot of these places so along mm -hmm. the way another person came into contact with my work i was uh this is kind of a funny story but i just explain it I had been going over to the community college saying, I have this, I have this body of knowledge that I would like to share with you. Now, I don't have a, a master's degree, so technically I can't teach at the, the community college level, but they do adjunct courses, and I thought maybe we could work something out. So um, I spoke with the person in the liberal arts department, and he asked the person who was teaching astronomy and science there, and they came back to me and said, 
thank you very much, but we are not interested. Mm -hmm. We don't think this would benefit our students. Mm -hmm. We don't teach about the night sky from this perspective that you're talking about. Yeah. The very next day, I got a phone call from someone in a different department at the college who said the lecture that we had scheduled for our afternoon luncheon had to cancel. Can you please come over here and give a lecture? <laughs> I had 45 minutes of notice. Mm -hmm. And even though I had been, as it were, knocking on their door for, for a long, long time, I, you know, in 45 minutes I couldn't get a lot together, so I just thought, well, sink or swim, this is my moment. So I went over there, and the person, the person who was supposed to give the presentation was a magician. So I made use of that, and I just said, we're going to pull a rabbit out of a hat here. It's going to be mm -hmm. magic. If this works, it will be magic. And the beautiful experience was that if I had been prepared, I probably would have brought images and poetry and different things that I could have shown. But because I didn't have that to show, I had to rely on the imagination of the people that were there. And this is an educated audience, so they knew Botticelli, they knew Tennyson, they knew these things that I could re refer to, and it came forth out of them, and then I connected it to the sky. Mm -hmm. It was a, just an amazing experience. Mm -hmm. The president of the college was there, and she immediately went to the person who had told me the day before, no, thank you, we're not interested, and said, we need to hire her. Mm -hmm. So this process began of trying to figure out how I could fit in that environment, and it didn't it didn't really work, but it was, it was a door opening. A lot of people were introduced to me and the way I did my work, mm -hmm. and out of that, another individual emerged, a, a destiny partner, mm -hmm. who said, we would like to give you an award as a dark sky advocate. Mm -hmm. I didn't know such a thing existed. Mm -hmm. I didn't know about this organization that she had started. Mm -hmm. Her name was Mary Lou Tanton, uh -huh. and the name of the organization was the Outdoor Lighting Forum. Uh -huh. So now we had this person who had been involved in the community in issues around lighting and how light was being used at night and how it was polluting the night sky. Right. We had a gentleman who was a reporter that then started working for the county and then here I was telling the story. So the mm -hmm. three of us made a very nice team mm -hmm. so that we would come together at lunch and talk about how can we, how can we do something more with what this is. Mm -hmm. In Emmett County there are parks, uh, a lot of different park properties because it's a resort area. So the county owns this land that's referred to as the Headlands. It's mm -hmm. called the Headlands because it's the upper westmost part of the lower land mass of the state of Michigan. Mm -hmm. And it's where the Straits of Mackinac go across to the west before they turn south into Lake Michigan. Mm -hmm. So that piece of property that juts out there is referred to as the Headlands. Mm -hmm. So this is a 600 acre park that's owned by Emma County. It's always free, it's always open and available to the public, and it's naturally dark. Mm -hmm. And so Fred and Mary Lou and I decided that we could uh, approach the International Dark Sky Association and Emmett County and create this relationship where we would protect the night sky mm -hmm. over that property. Mm -hmm. It was already naturally dark. It's protected by conservation easement by the local land conservation organization. The, um, the indigenous people in this area are very interested in the history of their people on that land, so it has remained an untouched wilderness. Mm -hmm. And so, so in 2009, it was the International Year of Astronomy. Around the world, there were communities, astronomy organizations, scientists, uh, colleges and universities uh, celebrating this to try to raise awareness about astronomy mainly, but also about the night sky. Mm -hmm. And so they chose, they being the United Nations sanctioned this year, 2009, as the International Year of Astronomy because it was the 400th anniversary of Galileo first using a telescope to look into the night sky. Right. So he was the first human being to do this. And the idea that the astronomy community had was, let's get as many people as possible outside looking through a telescope at the night sky. And to myself, I thought, well, we don't need the telescope. Let's just get as many people as possible outside looking at the sky. Exactly. And so I, um, I also, at that time, with the, the support, the kind of moral support of Fred and Mary Lou, was encouraged to go approach the Emmett County Board of Commissioners and say, you have this naturally dark wilderness. We could protect it and get designation from the International Dark Sky Association. 
which will draw an international level of attention to this area that will be very, very beneficial because it will attract the kind of attention that comes from people who want to protect and make best use of the natural resources. Right. So they were um, very candid about not knowing what I was talking about, but they liked the idea mm -hmm. and they unanimously supported me in pursuing this designation with the International Dark Sky Association. Mm -hmm. So the very first thing I did was plan an event to uh, correspond with a, a timed event that the International Year of Astronomy folks were having in October of 2009 on the anniversary this year that Galileo used his telescope. Right. So I thought, okay, we'll do one event in Petoskey, which is the county seat in Emmett County. Mm -hmm. And this is a, it's not really a, a city. I mean, it qualifies as a city by population, mm -hmm. but it's still a pretty small population, but it has its own measure of light pollution. Mm -hmm. So one night in Petoskey, and then the next night at the Headlands, so that the participants in the event could have an experience of both a light polluted area and then a non-light polluted area. Right, right. Well, as will often happen when you try to plan an event outside, Mother Nature is a fickle partner. <laughs> and it rained the entire weekend. Wow. So we had to be inside. Here I was once again, having to rely on what lived in the individuals that showed up. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And to draw that forth in a way that would show its uh, that I could show how we are connected to the night sky, mm -hmm. and it was really a remarkable evening. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the two nights we probably had a total of 150 people spread out over the two evenings, and this included an astronomer from our local community, mm -hmm. who was the last person in North America in the 20th century to discover a comet. Ah, now this is remarkable because. Human beings are no longer necessarily the ones discovering comets. We have machines, machines do doing that. this now. So here came this individual mm. to, uh, to s express his interest in what we were doing and to really lend a level of credibility to it because mm -hmm. I'm not an astronomer. I received my degree in English literature, so I'm about right. the poetry and the rhythm and the rhyme and the story. Yeah. And so he wrote a letter of recommendation for us we had several other letters of nomination, and we started to speak, or I did rather, started to speak with the International Dark Sky Association about going through their process to get our property recognized as a dark sky place. Mm -hmm. So they have outlined the criteria that are required. You have to write a master lighting plan. You have to inventory all the light on the property. If the lighting is not in compliance with their criteria, you have to say, here's how we'll change it. Here's what it will cost. Here's who's going to pay for it. Here's how long it will take. We have a, an ordinance about lighting in Emmett County. We had to create one just about that piece of property that was more strict. Mm -hmm. The property has to be accessible 24 hours a day. Mm -hmm. The public needs to be welcome, free of charge. We have to do ongoing educational programming, and we had to measure the sky quality. Mm -hmm. So all in all, it ended up being a 75-page application. It took two years to put it together and a lot of letters of support from the, the public and a lot of need to educate everyone about what this was and why yeah, it mattered. Yeah, and that so, it was important. Yes. So then in 2011, we submitted the application. Now I'm what was working with the Parks and Recreation Department Director at Emmett County, as well as the Communications Director, who was very involved in marketing and um, doing all of the, handling all of the communication needs for the county. Mm -hmm. She happens to also be a very good graphic designer. Mm -hmm. She was a reporter. We had worked together before. So there were these very synchronous relationships showing up, mm -hmm. which I have found to be very remarkable because uh, you, we can go a long time in our lives trying to get to the thing that we're to do. Yeah. And you know you're there when the people are right there to also support you and making it happen. Yeah. Yeah. So... Um, so there was now the team switched from my working with Mary Lou and Fred to working with Lori from the Emmett County Parks and Recreation Department and Beth who was in the Communications Department and when we received the designation for the Headlands as an International Dark Sky Park we were only the sixth in the United States and only mm -hmm. the ninth in the world so it was still 
quite a rare designation. Mm -hmm. Yes. Even though the International Dark Sky Association had been in existence since the 1980s, mm. they still hadn't designated a lot of what they call park properties. Yeah. So if you go to the their website, and from here forward, I would like to just refer to them as the IDA, okay. International Dark Sky okay. Association, uh -huh. IDA, IDA, and they're mm -hmm. located in Tucson, Arizona. Okay. Um, they have laid out the criteria that you must meet in order to be designated by them as one of these dark sky places. So there's a community, there's a preserve, there's parks. So there's different levels of designation. Um, we qualified, 